guys, Sue here. I'm back with another video. This is going to be hopefully a kind of short one, but I am drying oranges and I've never done this. So you're going to follow along with me and experiment with me as usual. So first of all, welcome back to any new, not new, welcome back to any viewers that have watched before. Welcome to any new viewers. I'm so happy that you're here. This is going to be a slightly different video than what I'm usually making. Sorry for the shakiness of the camera, if there is any, because I am holding it. It's not on my tripod. But I have a couple of oranges here, and I do want to use dried oranges in a gift that I'm making for this Christmas. So I have taken my oranges, cut the ends off of them, and they're sitting over here. And now I'm in the process of trying to cut these into slightly uniform sizes. It's not as easy as you might think. <laughs> they do say to cut them rather thin and uniform. So that is what I am attempting to do. Just regular old navel oranges here. Nothing unusual about them. Just bought them at the grocery store. So I have done nothing prior to this other than pulled them out, like I said, and cut the bottom and the top off. So I'm going to proceed to cutting these and we'll get them all laid out on the board here and then I will be right back. Hey guys, I'm just popping back in here really quickly um, just to let you know how I'm cutting these oranges. Let's see if we can get a... Okay. So there's a side view and they're looking pretty uniform, as uniform as I can get them without any special tools or devices, which I'm not using. I literally have a steak knife. But what I am doing is laying the orange on its side. I'm sorry if my fingers are in the way. And literally coming in on a side angle like this. So I'm cutting it while it's laying flat instead of trying to cut it like this. <laughs> this is when I need a professional cameraman. But I'm not cutting it like this. I find that it's too hard and it squishes it. So I am cutting it from the side. All right, carry on, Sue. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've uh, consulted, couldn't think of the word, my different sources on how to do this the best. And we're going to do it the way that's going to cure these and dry these the best. These are not going to be for eating. I'm not dehydrating them for later consumption. These are going in a craft project, so we want them to be dry. So I'm going to come over here to my oven. You want this to be a low temperature, 170. And they're going to dehydrate or, forgive my splash back top here, <laughs> you want it to be 170 for about six hours. Um, they do recommend cutting them about a quarter of an inch thick, which I think mine are pretty close. So I am going to put them on a baking sheet. I have a baking sheet over here. It is clean. It's just um, got a lot of use over the years. So I have a drying rack as well on top of that because you want the juice to be able to go through the rack onto the cookie sheet is what I'm assuming. And I have cut more orange slices that I really needed in case some of them don't work out. So I'm just laying these all out here. Hopefully I have enough room for all of them. I don't think it really matters how close they are. Nothing said it did. I just don't want orange juice slopping down into my oven because that'll be a sticky, sugary mess, which we don't need to deal with. Come move this guy. Put that one over there. Put you all the way up at the top. I'm just making sure to keep them inside of my baking sheet, which they all seem to be. And I'm choosing for the rest of these the best 
of those I have left just to make sure that I get my bang for the buck, so to speak, for the effort I've put into these. All right, so they're all on my baking sheet. I think they're all as closely in there as they can be. Now it's just waiting for the temperature to come up in the oven. And then I will put them in the oven and they will be in there for six hours. And I will be checking on them periodically. They say to specifically keep a close eye on them at the fifth hour because they can start to burn quickly at that point. So just waiting for the oven. I'll pop them in and then we will come back periodically as I check on them. So stay tuned. Okay, one hour down and here's what they look like so far. So they are beginning to dry. Hopefully you can see that. Five more to go. <laughs> we'll be back. Okay, this is hour two complete at 170 degrees. Let's take a look at how we're doing here. Okay, we're definitely getting there. I don't want to get too close. I mean, it's not super hot in here. It's only 170 degrees, but they're definitely drying out. For sure and they're looking pretty good so very cool alrighty hour two check-in complete we may or may not have to pick this up a little bit later I may have to turn the oven off because I might have to run out here for a little bit in case we do I will pick up where I left off some more to come stay tuned we are three and a half hours in and they're looking pretty darn dry so, so far this is working. The small one over there is starting to get a little crinkled. So I think those are going to have to come out. But the larger slices are doing not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and take the small ones out, put these back in for another hour, and then we'll see where we're at. Okay, so we're back. These are out of the oven. They've been in there for about four and a half hours. I did not do them for the four and a half hours consecutively. Last night I cooked them for three and a half in the oven at the 170 degrees. Left them in my oven overnight without the heat on. Totally cold oven. Just let them dry. Came back this morning. Re-put them in for another hour at 170 and they are totally dry. Now, are they a little scorched in places? For sure. Um, these were probably a little thinner than they should have been. My oven doesn't heat evenly all the time. That's another thing that I have to consider with my oven. Because you can see the ones that are on the left are a little bit more scorched, so there's obviously more heat coming over here. Although they are a little scorched over here as well. Um, the one thing I will say at the end of the day is the process works totally fine. Um, I wish I hadn't put them in for another hour at 170. Maybe 30 minutes would have done it. Because I did flip these over before I put them in. And the side that was on the grill seemed to cook a little bit more. I don't really know. Anyway, it works. Just keep a really close eye on them. Don't do what I did. Don't leave them in the oven overnight and then bake them a little bit longer because I think that had a tendency to burn them. But overall, I'm very pleased with the results because for what I'm going to use these for, I do have enough that I can use the good side on the side of the project that you will see. Some of them not so much, but there are definitely those that I can salvage and use in my project and that's really what I was going for so I'm pleased I hope this helped you guys if you wanted to do any sort of drying fruit for the holidays if you wanted to make garland or cast them in resin or something it definitely works there's a lot of great 
tutorials on YouTube that you can watch. So have at it. Enjoy if this is something that you're interested in. I just thought I'd put a quick video out here to show you how I did it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Um, subscribe if you're interested. I do all sorts of different, different experiments. Leave it a like. Leave it a comment if there's something else you'd like me to try. Stay safe, happy, and healthy whenever you are. And I will catch you in the next video. Bye, everyone.